Analysts are confident that the local bores will keep its head above the 7,000 level, but some have also begun looking at ways, at more ways, I should say, to hedge. On that note, let me bring in Raul Pedro. He's the president of the Money Market Association of the Philippines, otherwise known as MART, and he's live at our Makati Bureau. Uh, Raul, good to have you on the show with us this morning. So first things first, MART is a consortium of banks and investment houses and brokerages, as well as insurance companies. And the backstory to this is you're fighting to be turned into a self-regulatory organization. Tell me why. Yes, that's correct. Uh, good morning. Um, well, as you mentioned, we're looking for ways to hedge our rate risk, especially in this environment where, where interest rates are moving up. We'd like to be able to hedge our interest rate exposure. And it, over the past couple of years, we've always had a difficult time in doing that. And now, with a, an instrument on hand, the overnight index swap, we have approached the SEC and ask them if we could become an SRO just for that particular product. Admittedly, the current setup, um, the current SROs in, in, in the industry right now do not cater to that hedging instrument that we're planning on, on, on trading. So by taking on the responsibility ourselves, we believe that we could launch the product and, and manage an SRO um, so that uh, all the banks, all the participants can, can actually hedge our rate risk. So just to be very clear, Raul, you're only looking to be an SRO as far as that overnight index swap the, or OIS product is concerned and you don't necessarily want to be a separate entity altogether. That is correct. Um, the intention is to be an SRO for a product that is traded amongst the banks uh, amongst what we call the professional market. It is not intended to be traded for, for the public. And the instrument that we're going to trade, as you mentioned, is an overnight index swap. It's basically an interest rate swap where um, one would pay a certain fixed rate over a, a prescribed tenor, i.e. one month, two months, three months, all the way to a year. And the floating rate component, if you will, would be the average of the overnight rates over the same period. So for example, uh, a one month OIS, it's a fixed rate based on one month, while the floating rate component will be determined later on at the end of the one, of the one month period. It will be the average of the overnight rates over that one month. So we will simply just net settle. So in itself, it is a derivative product. Um, as such, based on our SRC rules, all derivatives are deemed as securities, hence we need to be able to trade it in an SRO. The current setup of the other SROs in the market, i.e. the PSE and the PDEX, currently are, they are not catered to handle, to handle such products, so we thought uh, that it would be best for Mark to set it up uh, because we don't want to be held hostage by other institutions, we're just waiting for for them to develop it. So we recognize the need. As you mentioned, interest rates are moving up. FOMC is about to meet up uh, later this week. So we really need that instrument in place. So the really, hope is that once we launch the OIS product, yes, go sorry, ahead, go roll, ahead. please. The hope is that once we are able to establish the OIS and we learn, Mart learns how to manage an SRO. We hope to use this SRO as a launching platform for other hedge instruments. Uh, for example, who knows, maybe the repo market could start up and, and we use the same platform or, or framework, if you will. So essentially, Raul, looking at a more accurate pricing of deposits and loans. Now, the other interesting thing that's happened recently is that beginning of July of next year, the BSP will no longer allow trust funds to invest in its two deposit facilities. I'm talking about the overnight deposit as well as the term deposit facility. Uh, the BSP says both are meant to manage liquidity for them to manage liquidity and were not meant to become investment tools of choice for these trust funds. Uh, what sort of impact do you see? see how, how it might impact fund flows in the local market? Well, the, the funds will simply go back on book balance sheet uh, funds of the banks. If currently, right, uh, the trust funds are able to place directly with the central bank. So if that window is shut, 
these funds will go back to the banks as, as on-book deposits. So in a way, uh, part of the funds will be tucked away as part of the reserves, but it's going to be more lending for the banks. Uh, so it, it, should, it should allow the banks to, to provide more for, for our business, to our, uh, to our lending activities. So overall impact to the market liquidity should be sort of neutral, uh, to perhaps only to be affected by the applicable reserve. But beyond that, we don't see any significant impact to it. What is critical, though, is that uh, what you've noticed is that the central bank has slowly increased its auction volume from a mere um, 30 billion when it all started. I believe the latest count is about they are auctioning about 180 billion worth of, of TDFs. That has been the main uh, change, and, and, and as a result, we're seeing rates uh, trade closer to policy rates. Lastly, Raul, if you take a look at the local share market uh, movements, there's been a bit of a rebound over the last few days. Uh, local index back above 7,000 now, but some analysts that I've spoken to are still biased to the downside forecast going as low as 6,500. What is your take on things? I know you've already, you're very uh, watchful of volatility at this stage. Well, yes, uh, clearly everyone's watching what will happen to to the U.S. policy, uh, we all we we all know that the Fed will probably hike this uh, later this week. We're all watching what they would do um, or what they would announce in terms of their dot plots uh, heading out into the 2017. And at the same time, we're all watching what the new policy of the uh, U.S. government will be, especially with the new government coming in. Uh, so everyone is a bit wary. I I think yes, we're above 7,000, but. Uh, people are wary at this point. Perhaps let's wait until everything crosses the year and, and we all have new set of funds to, to, to invest and, 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 and look at the markets. But clearly, right now, um, it appears that the U.S. is the one taking all the attention at this point. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Raul Pedro, President of the Money Market Association of the Philippines.